There's a minor character in this week's total portion, but he steals the one scene in which he appears. His name is On, the son of Peles. He's named as one of the co-conspirators of Korach at the beginning of the rebellion in the opening scene in the Parsha. But later, during the final confrontation between Korach and Moses, Moshe, On is nowhere to be found. The Talmud explains why. On's wife confronted him. She said, what are you doing? Right now, you're not the leader. Moshe is. And even if you win, Korach will be the leader. So what will you have gained? He said, honey, I love you. You're right. But I swore to Korach and his comrades that I would join the rebellion. How can I break my word? She said, darling, don't worry. I got this. So she plied him with wine, got him drunk, put him to bed in their tent, and then sat outside the tent in an immodest fashion. She knew that Korach and his cronies were rebels, but they were still leaders of the Jewish people, and they would never approach a married woman who was sitting outside her tent in an immodest fashion. She was right. They stayed away, and Own, while sleeping off his drunkenness, was saved the fate of Korach and company when they were swallowed up by the earth. The Talmud goes further and says that Own's name is linguistically related to the Hebrew word for mourning the death of a loved one, the word aninus. Why? Because Own spent the rest of his life in mourning repenting over the fact that he had almost joined in the terrible sin of Korach's rebellion, and mourning and regretting the fact that he himself did not have the strength of character or the force of will to resist. It was only due to his wife's intervention that he was saved. If only we could follow Owen's lead and mourn and regret the right things. The sages say that people regret the loss of their possessions, but not the loss of their time. Jackie Mason, the comedian, has a whole routine about how every Jew has a building that he could have bought for $100,000, and now it's worth $100 million. If you had gotten a stock tip years ago telling you to buy Microsoft or Apple at 10 bucks a share, and you didn't do that, you'd be beating yourself up forever. But what about all those minutes or days or weeks or months or years, or God forbid, a lifetime that we fritter away chasing senseless or useless or trivial or sometimes nonsensical pursuits. We don't regret that, and that's backwards. The loss of money, at the end of the day, it would have been nice, but big deal. You can't stick that in your coffin. You can't take it with you to the next world. But those lost minutes, hours, days, years, you could have engaged in spiritual endeavors or worthwhile activities of kindness that you could have brought with you to the next world. I heard a story recently about one of the great sages who invited a relative to join him at a siyum, a festive meal in honor of the completion by the sage of the entire Talmud. The relative said, what's special about this time? You've completed the Talmud many times. Why are you inviting me to this particular one? And the sage said, let me explain. This particular time, I'm celebrating the fact that I completed the study of the Talmud, the entire Talmud, during the few minutes here and there that I was waiting for a car, for a bus, for a train, for a plane, for a doctor. So I turned all of those minutes that would have otherwise been wasted into something important, something powerful. So this seum to me is very special. Every minute to us represents an opportunity, a decision. Are we going to use it in the right way, make it count, improve ourselves, and grab things that will last with us for eternity? Or are we going to fritter it away?